really the, the key to what we're doing um, is trying to manage tree rigor in a way that maximizes uh, productivity. And because of that, we've, we've settled on, on all B9 rootstocks at the moment. That's the one that we're very comfortable with. We can generate enough growth in the orchard in the first two years to, to come close to filling our space. We'd generally be happy to get to the top wire in the third season. Um, we'd like to improve on that, but that's, I wouldn't sacrifice that by planting a stronger tree that's going to give me 15 years of more difficult management. Um, and so what we're trying to do is, as I mentioned earlier, is get to this very narrow canopy, but with a lot lower inputs than, than some of these other lead trials systems and even tall spindle systems where there's a lot of tree training and, uh, and costs involved with that. So that gives you an idea of what our, what our system looks like. That's some fully established, probably seven-year-old ACMAC trees that you see in bloom and then again just before harvest. So we're kind of looking for, for that kind of density of tree. The tops in that, in that picture on the uh, bloom slide haven't been pruned yet. We don't prune any of our tops until after bloom. But um, we're kind of looking for a very open canopy with very uniform fruit that, that gives us apples that have the same brick, same color, same size, everything that we talked about before. But certainly not such a regimented and structured system that we've seen from, from Allen Brothers and the like. So we ended up, we've we, we been forced into a nursery site that we weren't particularly happy with. It just happened. To, uh, we had something different set up and it fell apart. And, and it was less than ideal soil. We had all these B9 rootstocks that had been batch grafted to Gala that we put in there. Everything was planted in the nursery in 2011. It was about 30,000 trees altogether. And, and grown in the nursery, and they ended up being fairly small whips, probably three to four feet high with, with no branching. It's not, it wouldn't be our normal tree. Um, most of our trees that we do now are budded trees. Um, but because we went through this program, we may have switched that thought process as well. Uh, and what happened was at the end of that year, we decided, well, here's an opportunity. We'll take some small bench crafted trees that we've used in the past and will always outgrow a large tree when you plant it. So at the end of the third year, it's often difficult to tell that you plant a big tree or a little tree. And, and that we plant half of those right away, and I'll, I'll show you what happened in the site and other bits and pieces. But really, this is typically what they look like. So they weren't certainly not impressive trees. If your nursery would set them to you, you'd be screaming. Um, this is sometimes what happens when you grow your own trees. You'll have to, to, to deal with these issues. The one thing I will say is the cost is very low. So bench grafted trees, these are imperial galas with no royalties, would cost us under two dollars a tree. So it's quite reasonable to work with. Um, they were grown in the, in the nursery just under normal procedures for bench grafts, stripped down to, to one liter and then basically kept with no side limbs. We apply um, calcium nitrate. We have overhead irrigation in our nursery, not triple. Um, just the way things have worked out. Not every year do we need water, so we have been working with that way. And you know, we apply a lot of copper to keep, uh, to keep fire blight out, out of the nursery. 